Hey crafty friends, this is Jenny from crafttestummies.com and today we're going to look at Primary Elements Artist Pigments from Color Art. All right, so let's take a closer look. And first of all, I'm gonna tell you that they come in these little pots. Now they come in different sizes, but this is the size that I got. And they come in little clear plastic jars. And as you can see here, they are a very, very ultra fine powder. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's almost like baby powder or a perfect pearls or a pearl X. It's very finely ground. And you can see the iridescent shimmers um, right in the product. Now, um, sometimes the color that you see in the container is not what you'll actually see in real life. So for example, this is hot cinnamon and I will show you what the hot cinnamon swatch looks like. So there you go. So you really cannot judge what you're gonna get on the paper by what's in the pot. Just be aware of that. And now I'll so show you some swatches. Okay, so this shows you um, some of the colors that I have, including the Olive Vine, Stargazer, Teal Zircon, which I happen to absolutely love, Hot Cinnamon, my second favorite, Wisteria and Sunflower. And you can see that once I apply them onto this paper, this is watercolor cardstock, um, you can see the shimmer, the, the little shimmer pearly color. You see it? It's right there. Um, also, I do recommend that you use a watercolor card for this because it really will show up so much better on watercolor paper. And here is another set of colors. Coral Berry, Pink Azalea Kiwi, Majestic Blue and Dragonfly. Now, I just took each of these colors, put a little bit on my, my table, mixed it with water, and I got this beautiful blue color. I just wanted to show you that they do mix very, very nicely. Now, the website says that this does not have a binder in it, but um, it does act much like a powdered dye in that it bursts into life and then quickly is absorbed into the paper. Let me show you. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the product in action. I've got three colors here, and sadly, one of the downsides of the product is that it comes in these little jars. Um, there's really no good way to sprinkle them onto your surface if you like that kind of sprinkly effect. But I do use just like a little um, clay sculpting tool that has like a little spade on the end, and that seems to work well. I can kind of just get a little bit of sprinkling action going here. And if you go a little bit higher up, it gives you a more even coverage if you're looking to have like fewer little splotches. I'm gonna move this aside because I don't want it to get wet. And I'm going to use a mister. So you can see that this is another one of those products that kind of springs into life and um, it looks really impressive, of course. Um, let me grab that hot cinnamon since it's one of my favorite colors and add a little bit of this onto the damp paper. This is a watercolor postcard. So see, I'm just adding it on and you can see it already kind of coming to life. And a little spray of water is all it takes to get it to start to move and blend. So let me show you some other dry examples. Okay, so this is just a, a little bit of that random kind of shimmer effect um, I did on a periscope. You can see here this um, kind of almost like a nebula or halo effect. This is where those iridescent particles kind of lifted up and started to move around as I was moving the paper. I really love this effect. I think that this is really, um, striking and it adds another layer of dimension the same way say example the um, Lindy's magical powders are it just gives you another um, sense of dimension now I was asked if you can use this with regular cardstock and the answer is yes so this is just a piece of very heavyweight cardstock it's about 120 weight um, it won't uh, necessarily sink in the whole way because this paper just can't absorb that much water but you can get kind of a nice light effect. Now, I did the same amount of sprinkling on this piece of paper, and as you can see, the colors are just really a lot more vibrant and they move around a lot more. So that's why I really recommend the watercolor paper for this. Now, I wanna point out too that you can also mix this with your favorite medium. This is just white craft paint, and you can absolutely mix it with white paint 
or a clear medium or embossing pastes or gels or even um, white or translucent polymer clay. Now because this was white paint to begin with, it really takes a lot of pigment in order for it to start to show up. So just be aware, you will use a lot in this instance. But if you've got it and you wanna custom tint something, you absolutely can. This is another piece that I did. It's embossed resist using the primary elements. And I embossed it and then I hit it with a crayon and I'll have a little video of that for you too. But I just wanted to show you how beautiful the colors show up. And it really kind of gives it almost like a patina effect. You really kind of get almost like layers and layers. And then lastly, this little bit I wanted to show you was in my Diane Reevely journal. And um, fortunately the paper is thick enough that it really holds up to watercolor techniques. But I actually layered distress stains down and then I added the powders on top and added water. And I wanna show you how the two kind of play together in this beautiful way so that you kind of get lots and lots of speckles and layers. And because this distress stains reactivate, um, you can kind of keep on layering and keep on playing. I'll show you right here. I can actually give it a little spray and then put a little powder on. And I can kind of keep layering. So I think the point of this is that you should know that really um, these powders will play very nicely with your other watercolor uh, elements and products. Now if you want to use this as a straight up watercolor wash, you can just add a little bit of water to your work surface, pick up some powders on a paintbrush, and then just mix it together ever so slightly, and it'll make a nice creamy paint. Now again, because this is a powdered dye and pigment kind of together, um, it does have some opacity to it, more than you would actually even think. Um, so it will kind of, uh, the sparkle part will kind of lay on top while the dyes actually permeate the paper. But I just thought I would mention that because if you're layering, um, you might put like a darker color on top of a lighter color and, and it'll actually kind of stand off um, a little bit. It won't blend absolutely completely. Now just be aware too that there will be some bleed because this isn't a true dye. It actually says on the website that there is no binder in this product, but I have a hard time believing that because it does sink in and dye the, fat, uh, dye the paper underneath it. You can see that even after I wet this down, there is still a lot of color left here. It isn't you know, just completely lifting off and running away. So um, I can't speak to the light fastness of this product, but as far as being able to layer, um, as you can see, it does dye the paper pretty quickly and it leaves behind you know, that pretty shimmer. Now I want to point out that I did do a little post on Brusho versus Perlex and I included primary elements. And as you can see here, I actually put all the um, different products down on a piece of watercolor paper and then washed them off with my thumb. And you can see that the primary elements really stuck onto the paper and dyed the paper. So I feel like it's a really great product for that. So there you go. I hope you found this video helpful and or informative and that it will help you make a good decision when you're buying your favorite pigment powders and dyes. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And as always, have a crafty day.